Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Read With Me session. Here we are reading What I Know For Sure by Oprah Winfrey. And we are on the resilience chapter of this phenomenal book. Okay. It's been really, really awesome just hearing Oprah's stories, her perspectives, her point of view of what she knows for sure in this life. And um, it's a really, really amazing book. So hope you're enjoying it. And so glad that you are here. And we are going to spend and invest the next 30 minutes or so together. All right, let's dive right into it. My name is Vanessa Black. And if you're just running into this video for the first time, we read two books every single month, one on personal freedom and one on financial freedom. Because our vision here, our mission at Billionaires, is to impact the lives of 4 billion souls all over the world to achieve personal freedom and financial freedom. And I'm so happy and grateful that we are doing that right here and right now. And you are a part of that vision and mission. So let's dive right into it. Go ahead and share this book or any of the books that you see in our playlist that you can uh, check out and you want to share with a friend, family member, or, you know, somebody, you know, that you thought of when you read this book or another book that we actually have read so far this year. Cannot wait to hear your feedback. Um, you know, after you read the specific books or whichever book that you read, we love to hear your comments, your feedback, your thoughts as well. And so let's dive right into it. Resilience. Okay. Barnes Burton down. And now I can see the moon. Mizuta Masha Masahide, 17th century Japanese poet. No matter who we are or where we come from, we all have our own journey. Mine began one April afternoon in 1953 in rural Mississippi, where I was conceived out of wedlock by Vernon Winfrey and Vernita Lee. Their one-time union that day, not at all a romance, brought about an unwanted pregnancy, and my mother concealed her condition until the day I was born. So no one was prepared for my arrival. There were no baby showers, none of the anticipation or delight that I see in the faces of expectant friends who rub their swollen stomachs and and reverence my birth was marked by regret hiding and shame when the author and counselor john bradshaw who pioneered the concept of the inner child appeared on the oprah winfrey show in 1991 he took my audience and me through a profound exercise he asked us to close our eyes and go back to the home we grew up in to visualize the house itself come closer he said look inside the window and find yourself inside what do you see and more important what do you feel for me, it was an overwhelming, sad, yet powerful exercise. What I felt at almost every stage of my development was lonely. Not alone, because there were always people around, but I knew that my soul's survival depended on me. I felt I would have to fend for myself. As a girl, I used to love when company would come to my grandmother's house after church. When they left, I dreaded being alone with my grandfather, who was senile, and my grandmother, who was often exhausted and impatient. I was the only child for miles around, so I had to learn to be with myself. I invented new ways to be solitary. I had books and homemade dolls and chores and farm animals I often named and talked to. I'm sure that all the time alone was critical in defining the adult I would become. Looking back through John Bradshaw's window into my life, I was sad that the people closest to me didn't seem to realize what a sweet-spirited little girl I was. But I also felt strengthened seeing it for myself. Like me, you might have experienced things that cause you to deem yourself unworthy. I know for sure that healing the wounds of the past is one of the biggest and most worthwhile challenges of life. It's important to know when and how you are programmed so you can change the program and doing so is your responsibility, no one else's. There is one irrefutable law of the universe. We are each responsible for our own life. If you're holding anyone else accountable for your happiness, you're wasting your time. You must be fearless enough to give yourself the love you didn't receive. Begin noticing how every day brings a new opportunity for your growth. How buried disagreements with your mother show up in arguments with your spouse. How unconscious feelings of unworthiness appear in everything you do and don't do. All these experiences are your life's way of urging you to leave the past behind and make yourself whole. Pay attention. Every choice gives you a chance to pave your own road. Keep moving full speed ahead. Page 35. Every challenge we take on has the power to knock us to our knees. But what's even more disconcerting 
than the jolt itself is our fear that we don't withstand it. When we feel the ground beneath us shifting, we panic. We forget everything we know and allow fear to freeze us. Just the thought of what could happen is enough to throw us off balance. What I know for sure is that the only way to endure the quake is to adjust your stance. You can't avoid the daily tremors. They come with being alive. But I believe these experiences are gifts that force us to step to the right or left in search of a new center of gravity. Don't fight them. Let them help you adjust your footing. Balance lives in the present. When you feel the earth moving, bring yourself back to the now. You'll handle whatever shakeup the next moment brings when you get to it. In this moment, you still, you're still breathing. In this moment, you've survived. In this moment, you're finding a way to step onto higher ground. For years, I had a secret that almost no one knew. Even Gail, who knew everything about me, wasn't aware of it until seven years into our friendship. The same is true for Stedman. I had it until I felt safe enough to share. The years I was sexually abused from age 10 to 14. My resulting promiscuity, prom promiscuity and finally at 14, my becoming pregnant. I was so ashamed. I hid the pregnancy until my doctor noticed my swollen ankles and belly. I gave birth in 1968. The baby died in the hospital weeks later. I went back to school and told no one. My fear was that if I were, if I were found out, I would be expelled. So I carried the secret into my future, always afraid that if anyone discovered what had happened, they too would expel me from their lives. Even when I found the courage to publicly reveal the abuse, I still carried the shame and kept the pregnancy a secret. When a family member who has since died leaked the story to the tabloids, everything changed. I felt devastated, wounded, betrayed. How could this person do this to me? I cried and cried. I remember Stedman coming into the bedroom that Sunday afternoon, the room darkened from the closed curtains, standing before me, looking like he too had shed tears. He said, I'm so sorry, you don't deserve this. When I dragged myself from bed for work that Monday morning after the news broke, I felt beaten and scared. I imagined that every person on the street was going to point out their finger at me and scream, pregnant at 14, you wicked girl, expelled. No one said a word, though, not strangers, not the people I knew. I was shocked. Nobody treated me differently. For decades, I had been expecting a reaction that never came. I've since been betrayed by others. But although it's a kick in the gut, it doesn't make me cry or take, my, take, take to my bed anymore. I try never to forget the words of Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every difficult moment has its silver lining. And I soon realized that having the secret out was liberating. Not until then could I begin repairing the damage done to my spirit as a young girl. I realized that all those years I had been blaming myself, what I learned for sure was that holding the shame was the greatest burden of all. When you have nothing to be ashamed of, when you know who you are and what you stand for, you stand in wisdom. Whenever I'm faced with a difficult decision, I ask myself, what would I do if I weren't afraid of making a mistake, feeling rejected, looking foolish, or being alone? I know for sure that when you remove the fear, the answer you've been searching for comes into focus. And as you walk into what you fear, you should know for sure that your deepest struggle can, if you're willing and open, produce your greatest strength. Have you ever come across an old picture and been instantly transported back in time to the point where you can feel the clothes you were wearing? There's a photo of me at 21 years old that gives me exactly this feeling. The skirt I was wearing cost $40, more than I'd ever spent on a single item of clothing, but I was willing to do it for my first major celebrity interview, Jesse Jackson. He was speaking at a local high school telling students, down with dope, up with hope. And I had been assigned to cover him. My news director didn't think the event was worth our time, but I'd insisted. Okay, pleaded, assuring him I could come back with a piece worthy of the six o'clock news, and I did. I had a fondness for telling other people's story, extracting the truth of their experience, and distilling it into wisdom that could inform, inspire, or benefit someone else. 
Still, I was uncertain about what to say to Jackson or how to say it. If I knew then what I know now, I would have never wasted even a single minute doubting my path. Because when it comes to matters of the heart, emotion, connection, and speaking in front of large audiences, I thrive. Something happens between me and whomever I'm engaged with. I can feel them and sense that they are vibing right back with me. That's because I know for sure that anything I've been through or felt, they have too, and probably more so. The great connection I feel with everyone I speak to stems from being aware that we are all on the same path, all of us wanting the same things, love, joy, and acknowledgement. No matter what challenge you may be facing, you must remember that while the canvas of your life is painted with daily experiences, behaviors, reactions, and emotions, you're the one controlling the brush. If I hadn't known this at 21, I could have saved myself a lot of heartache and self-doubt. It would have been a revelation to understand that we are all the artists of our own lives and that we can use as many colors and brush strokes as we like. I have always prided myself on my independence, my integrity, my support of others, but there's a thin line between pride and ego. And I've learned that sometimes you have to step out of your ego to recognize the truth. So when life gets difficult, I found that the best thing to do is ask myself a simple question. What is this here to teach me? I remember back in 1988, when I first took ownership of the Oprah show, I had to buy a studio and hire all the producers. There were a million things I didn't know. I made a lot of mistakes during those early years including one so big we had a priest come in to cleanse the studio afterward. Fortunately for me, I wasn't so well known back then. I could learn a lesson and grow from it privately. Today, part of the price of success is that my lessons are public. If I stumble, people know, and some days the pressure of that reality makes me want to scream. But one thing I know for sure, I am not a screamer. I can count on one hand the number of times in my life, four, when I've actually raised my voice at someone. So when I feel overwhelmed, I usually go to a quiet place. A bathroom stall works wonders. I close my eyes, turn inward, and breathe until I can sense a still, small space inside me that is the same as the stillness in you and in the trees and in all things. I breathe until I can feel the space expand and fill me. And I always end up doing the exact opposite of screaming. I smile at the wonder of it all. I mean, how amazing is it that I, a woman born and raised in Mississippi when it was a apartheid state who grew up having to go into town even to watch TV, we certainly didn't have one at home and where I am today. Wherever you are in your journey, I hope you too will keep encountering challenges. It is a blessing to be able to survive them and to be able to keep putting one foot in front of the other. To be in a position to make the climb of life's mountain, knowing that the summit still lies ahead and every experience is a valuable teacher. We all have, st we all have stand down moments that require us to stand up in the center of ourselves and know who we are. When your marriage falls apart, when a job that defined you is gone, when the people you've counted on turn their backs on you, there is no question that changing the way you think about your situation is a key to improving it. I know for sure that all of your hurdles have meaning and being open to learning from those challenges is a difference between succeeding and getting stuck. As I get older, I can feel my body making a shift. No matter how I try, I can't run as fast as I could before, but to tell you the truth, I don't really care to. Everything's shifting, breasts and knees and attitude. I marvel at my own sense of calm now. Events that used to leave me reeling with my head in a bag of chips no longer even phase me. Even better, I'm privy to insights about myself that only a lifetime of learning can bring. I've said that I always knew I was exactly where I was meant to be when I was standing on the stage talking to viewers around the world. That was truly my sweet spot. But the universe is full of surprises because I'm learning that where sweet spots are concerned, we're not limited to just one. At different times in our journeys, if we're paying attention, we get to sing the song we're meant to sing in the perfect key of life. Everything we've ever done and all we're meant to do comes together in harmony with who we are. When that happens, we feel the truest expression of ourselves. I feel myself heading there now, and it's my wish for you too. One of my greatest lessons has been to fully understand that what looks like a dark patch in the quest for success is a universe pointing you in a new direction. 
Anything can be a miracle, a blessing, an opportunity if you choose to see it that way. Had I not been demoted from my six o'clock anchor post in Baltimore back in 1977, the talk show gig would never have happened when it did. When you can see obstacles for what they are, you never lose faith in the path it takes to get you where you want to go. Because this I know for sure, who you're meant to be evolves from where you are right now. So learning to appreciate your lessons, mistakes, and setbacks as stepping stones to the future is a clear sign that you're moving in the right direction. During difficult times, I often turn to a gospel song called Stand. In it, songwriter Donnie McClurgan sings, what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like it's never enough? What do you give when you've given your all and it seems like you can't make it through? The answer lies in McClurkin's simple refrain, you just stand. That's where strength comes from, our ability to face resistance and walk through it. It's not that people who preserve don't ever feel doubt, fear, and exhaustion. They do, but in the toughest moments, we can have faith that if we just take one step more than we feel we're capable of, if we draw on the incredible resolve every human being possesses, we'll learn some of the most profound lessons life has to offer. What I know for sure is that there is no strength without challenge, adversity, resistance, and often pain. The problems that make you want to throw up your hands and holler, mercy, will build your tenacity, courage, discipline, and determination. I've learned to rely on the strength I inherited from all those who came before me, the grandmothers, sisters, aunts, and brothers who were tested with unimaginable hardships and still survived. I go forth alone and stand as 10,000. My Angelou proclaimed in her poem, our grandmothers, when I move through the world, I bring all my history with me. All the people who paved the way for me are part of who I am. Think back for a moment on your own history, not just where you were born or where you grew up, but the circumstances that contributed to your being right here, right now. What were the moments along the way that wounded or scared you? Chances are you've had a few, but here's what's remarkable. You are still here, still standing. And that concludes today's Read With Me session from What I Know For Sure by Oprah Winfrey amazing chapter would love to know your thoughts in the comments let me know if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up or a love and appreciate your time it's been beautiful and yeah it's, it's awesome to hear oprah's stories and what she's gone through how she's grown through it and her perspective and i feel like reflecting upon that we can see in our own lives how we've grown how we progress and can see a lot clearer. So I appreciate you. I love you. Cannot wait to see you in the next Read With Me session where we dive into the next chapter of this particular book. Connection is the next chapter. So we'll see you there. Have a beautiful rest of your day. God bless. Talk to you soon.